Morning, everybody. It's 6.30 in the morning, so it must be another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series on cell division. Important topic for the day is meiosis. This video would be good for AP Bio and regular bio alike. So if you got some friends working on bio meiosis, go ahead and pass it along. As always, we start out with our objectives. So here are the things that I need you to know by the end of this video. First thing, if it'll come up. Recognize the purpose of meiosis, so why do we have it? Second, describe the steps of my meiosis. Sorry, forgive me if through this video I confuse the two up. Just remember today we're talking about meiosis. So describe the steps of meiosis and compare and contrast meiosis and mitosis. So first question to answer would be why meiosis? Why do we have this process that is different from mitosis? I mean, mitosis gets a job done. It is responsible for the production of the vast majority of cells in your body. So why do we need this funky little character called meiosis? First reason is to produce gametes. So remember in our last video we talked about gametes having half the genetic material. They are in instead of two in. The only way that that can happen is if those cells are produced using the process of meiosis. Second reason, maintenance of a diploid number. Now, what do I mean by that? All I mean is this. Every living organism has got its own unique diploid number of chromosomes. For humans, 46. Each of our somatic cells have 46 chromosomes in them, 23 from mom, 23 from dad. If humans are to continue as humans, we need to maintain our number of 46 chromosomes. If we did not have meiosis to cut the number in half when gametes are produced, every time a sperm and an egg fused, you would have 46 chromosomes fusing with 46 chromosomes, giving you 92, and then the resulting individual would have 92 chromosomes, and when they made gametes, they would have an egg with 92 and a sperm with 92, and when those fused, they'd form an individual with 184 chromosomes, so we'd have a serious problem on our hands. The only way we can keep things consistent is by producing gametes that have half the amount of genetic material. And the last reason is to provide variation. Mitosis, when it copies cells, it produces exact copies. One, the daughters are just like the parents. In meiosis, that's not the case. It, each of the daughter cells is different from the parent cell, and that is actually going to be the result of all the variation that we see in the world. Let's look at a very quick overview, and then we'll talk about the steps individually. So a couple of things to note. One, two in parent cell enters. So one diploid parent cell enters the process, four in daughter cells exit. So you got one diploid cell going in, four haploid cells coming out. Each daughter cell is unique from the others and from the parent. So none of the cells that come out of meiosis are like the others. And it occurs in two phases, unlike mitosis, which happens in one phase. But you will notice there are some striking similarities between mitosis and meiosis. They look almost identical, and a lot of the terminology is similar between the two. So try to keep track of it as we go through the steps of meiosis. So here we go. Let's take a look. Like I said, meiosis happens in two phases. There's meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Looking at this picture right now, I hope that you are seeing it as very similar to the process of mitosis. So here's what we got. Just like mitosis, our cell goes through the cell cycle. It gets its DNA duplicated in S phase. All of the organelles have been duplicated. Everything is ready to go while well, we are in interphase. Our cell enters into prophase. And just like in prophase in mitosis, all of your chromatin condenses into chromosomes. There is one striking and very important difference here, though. If you look at this picture right here, you will see that these chromosomes are overlapping with each other. Now, note that these are homologous chromosomes. So this would be two of chromosome number one or two of chromosome number two or four or whatever. They are homologous. They match each other. During prophase one in meiosis, these chromosomes lie down next to each other. As they lie down next to each other, they cross their arms and they actually trade genetic information with each other. There will be a whole slide on this um, later on, but just know that in prophase one, the chromosomes 
swap genetic information in a process called crossing over. Okay. And also know that a couple other terms you need to know. Um, these two homologous chromosomes laying next to each other is called a tetrad because you see there are four little sister chromatids here. Tetra is four. And the place where a crossing over happens where those chromosomes actually trade information is called the chiasmata. From this point, everything is the exact same as in mitosis. You have got our chromosomes lining up in metaphase, metaphase military, so remember they line up across the middle. And then in anaphase, homologous chromosomes separate. So note that that's going to be a little bit different, but homologous chromosomes are separating. And that is the whole of meiosis 1. Now, if you were a cell in mitosis, you would just pinch in half here, and each cell would go on its merry way. But since we are doing meiosis, we need to cut the amount of genetic information in half, and we have not yet done that. So without duplicating, without going through replication, are two cells that come out of meiosis 1 are going to enter into meiosis 2. So here's our two cells that came out of meiosis 1. And they are essentially going to go through the same process all over again. Our homologous chromosomes are going to be separated in the, to the two cells. We've got prophase 2, metaphase 2. Those homologous chromosomes line up across the metaphase plate. In anaphase 2, the sister chromatids separate. So this is the point right here where our genetic information gets, actually, our genetic information is cut in half, right there. But note right here that sister chromatids are separating from each other. And also, if you look at these sister chromatids, you'll notice that they are combinations of red and blue. That is a result of crossing over, where they traded information from, with one another. For anaphase 2, we go into telophase 2, and we now have four haploid daughter cells. Each one has got half the genetic information. Crossing over has occurred. They are all ident or they're all unique from one another, and we have now got four eggs or four sperm. Let's focus on a couple of real quick points that you need to be fairly familiar with. So Crossing over is the reason that you are not like any of your siblings. Like I mentioned a second ago, in crossing over, you have got homologous chromosomes lying next to each other. So this might be two copies of chromosome 2 or 4 or 6 or 8 or whatever. When they lie next to each other, they cross over at this place called the chiasmata, and they essentially swap genes. So if you see red got some green, orange got some yellow, yellow got some orange, and green got some red. Note that they are swapping the same gene. So they cross over at the point where, let's say, all the genes for nose size lines up. So they're trading nose genes. Or they would line up where eye color genes are, and they would trade eye color genes. It's not like they're swapping an ear gene for a chin gene. They are swapping the same genes, and this gives us all of the variation that we see in the world. The other thing to note is that in mitosis, you are separating homologous chromosomes. So that would be these guys. If we are going through mitosis, that would be one cell. There would be a second cell. Because we are cutting our genetic material in half, in meiosis, we are taking these homologous chromosomes and separating them further into their sister chromatids. So one cell, two cells, three cells, four cells. So one, two, three and four. So note that mitosis separates homologous chromosomes, meiosis separates sister chromatids. And finally, a recap and a this versus that. So in mitosis, you got one stage. You produce two identical daughter cells. There is no crossing over. Homologous chromosomes are separated. And most division in the body, most cell division in the body, is via mitosis. For meiosis, we are producing gametes. We are using two stages. We are making four unique daughter cells. There is crossing over that produces variation. Sister chromatids are being separated. And this is only producing gametes. With that, I think that covers everything that we need to talk about in reference to meiosis. Hope you were able to follow along. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. We'll see you again. Thank you.